I click on laser disc wrapping to laser disc playing. Oh, that's unwrapped, I must say. That was a bit of a, you know, maybe I should have had, um, maybe I should have had Jaws to open the bloody packing because it was really bulletproof. That not even Bond himself could uh, open. Usual plastic covering and uh, help me, Obi Wan. Yeah, it's got an Obi Wan. Help me, Obi Wan. Help me, Obi uh, 007. You're our only spy hope. Gatefold. Wow. 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 Awesome. That's cool. That's a cool picture. We on the platter. Doing an alignment check because, uh, you know, on our uh, matrix uh, decoder, they need um, manual alignment because they don't have like a what's called auto azimuth. Uh, some things do, so you know, uh, it depends on what year, what grade, etc., etc., etc. So I've just had to do a slight. Um, manual uh, adjustment of the left total right total so any common center dialogue will, you know will be in the center it does occasion this movie does mix does occasionally have dialogue panning okay <clears throat> as well as effects panning and so forth and um, so i just got put in those sort of uh, settings for it um, roughly um I think last time I uh, checked the, um, hang on, I think last time I did a check on the, uh, uh, the Dolby uh, 44MP, uh, I think it, it checked out all the alignment, you know, the test tone, one kilohertz, use one kilohertz sine wave and then um, just the um, variable resistors on the uh, processor so that, um, there's no leakage on the left or right. It's all down the center, and it's all uh, checked, uh, you know, with oscilloscope or uh, RTA, so that the uh, the levels are equal. <clears throat> um, so it's just occasionally you get a a content on a laser disc or a VHS or whatever. Um, could be a Blu-ray with a 424. You never know. Um, and just got to check the, uh, you know. The alignment, which is something that most people don't probably even do in their home theatres. Um, and uh, if you think the uh, the Dolby DSU on a Denon is going to do it automatically, dead wrong, because it doesn't have an auto azimuth built in. Yeah, and they call it a flagship. <laughs> Prime Minister, I understand the gravity. So dialogue's down the centre. With a kind of foggy, yes, sa with a kind of foggy sound. And... Uh, for anyone that's, uh, you know, that knows, knows, you know, about the foggy, you know. Anyway, that's, that's, uh, hush, hush, only, only, uh, us, hmm, certain people know about that. Um, <laughs> okay, let me see how this handles on the DSU. Uh, so... It's 
So it's on auxiliary two. So I'll go over to auxiliary one and I'll see how it handles. Yes, I'll put our best man on it. Yes, I'll put our best man. Yeah, it's leaking over to the right a little bit. That's what I suspected. So, yeah. That will be up next to DSU on this bloody pff, rubbish. Load of bloody rubbish. I mean, um, I'm trying to think whether or not um, one of the Yamaha uh, ADRs that I've still got had an auto azimuth um, or if it you would have to do um, manual adjustment on the um, I don't think it would have had an, I'm not sure, I can't remember what the input status is because this is why I got the input here so what I go do here is I go down to general so if I go into the menu again general and then you've got the zone 2 which I'm outputting uh, so the signal goes um, out from the RCA phono or the HDMI to um, over to the other AVR which I'm not using at the moment because I'm only using the CP Dolby uh, cinema processors um, so that signal is going down there through there and back up onto auxiliary number two. But it's auxiliary one for there. Or and uh the uh the Marantz up there would be uh also down auxiliary number two. It's a bit complicated but um yeah. Uh I'm trying to think uh what other uh, things that I'm not sure if any of the onkios that I got would have um a uh, auto azimuth or I know the Harman Kardon ADP1A Harman Kardon uh, ADP1A that was cheap as chips that was um, that's got an auto azimuth as well as manual so you've got two options you can use manual or auto um, I can't recall how well it did it because I haven't had that Harman Kardon <laughs> in this rack for years, um, come to think of it, I might just um, you know, but um, it's it's figuring out how much uh, how much room I've got. You know, I mean, um, that's where to put it. I don't mind if I put it over this, uh, put the Harmon over this side, uh, and then stack everything up a little. You know, ready to take it, put the Harmon down there, and then put everything else here back on top. I'm certainly not doing it with the Technics because the turntable now would be too damn high up and uh, that's fragile. That's as high as it is. I can just get the uh, the vinyl on the bloody platter. Um, and then I could sort of like output the outputs from the Harman to the input on the, um, the Denon because it's got eight internal inputs. And I could uh, take the output specific, only a few, because I could still do the uh, proper left half, right half surround, so I wouldn't need the Harman to do that, um, because the Harman actually had the side surround, back surround, but it's doing the same signal through ProLogic and probably would do it different with the, um, I don't know, I'm not sure if it had a Logic 6 or 7 or whatever you, Logic, whatever it was on it. Um, hardly used it. It's got a few other gimmicks like 70 millimeter mode. Um, I'm sure, yeah, it could do left center, right center. Yeah, okay. Um, but it was cheap as chips. But still, um, the other downside on the harm on this is, you, you know, you got to turn it off completely when not using it because it just gets hot. It just gets ridiculously hot. Um, so you got to switch everything off, you know, so, you know. Um, but as it is, it runs, I think, as a processor, I think it's pretty good. And um, I'm just trying to think. Um, because if I use the uh, the outputs from, you know, because it's got THX, blah, blah, um, I could use the decorrelation because then that would pass through my 
the internal eight channel input on there and uh yeah i would get that decorrelated sound on the right surround where it sounds like a when playing pink noise through it it from memory recalls it's got a kind of hang on no it doesn't sound like it sounds like pink noise but it's got a kind of certain specific rhythm uh to the um what it's doing um actually i'll be able to have a put it on the rta and actually see what what it's actually doing in terms to the uh, the frequency because um there was a video recently where dave rat he did a video of two speakers and trying to decorrelate with microphone uh polarity etc and uh, other sort of things and then <clears throat> moving the speakers kind of side by side and shifting them around like that and um, I'm not sure if he did one above and one below uh, so he got one on the floor and one above and not unless he's an octopus of course um, <laughs> but you could put one speaker slightly stand up and then put one down there and then one up there and kind of bring it sort of you know do it in a vertical plane rather than the horizontal um, and then kind of circly, I suppose, as well as doing it outside, because the room interferes a lot with the the frequency, different f wavelengths, etc. And anyway, uh, I'll be able to see. I'll be able to see what that does um, on the RTA. I'll be able to see what whether it's um, kind of shifting up and down through the frequency, or just raising the frequency level as a whole, up and down, up and down. Because uh, there have been theories in the past. But no one's actually uh, recorded it or videoed it or on RTA. And that was years ago. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. So, that might, I might fit that Harmon in the rack uh, sometime soon. I'm not doing it for my viewers. I'm doing it not really for myself. I'm just doing it out of curiosity. And, um... <laughs> Well, it's like I say, I mean, there are a lot of chefs here, you know, usually they spoil the broth, but unfortunately, no, it doesn't do it here because there are a lot of cinemas that have more or less the same sort of setup, and it's a little bit more complicated as well. I think there's one, one, one cinema um, where I've seen pictures of the booth, and it is so complicated. I mean, it's just the audio processing amplifier and rack itself is longer than my room it is or well, maybe it's about the length of my room and that is a lot of racks i mean i I've, I've never seen that many you know for so they can cater for so many cinema formats so many um sound formats um i'm not sure if they got sense around <laughs> I think they had CDS installed in the in the system as well, um, and that's only on a few movies, uh, you know. Now, um, you know, and some of those movies you can still get on, whether it be seventy millimeter six track mag. Um, but yeah, wow, that 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 booth was flipping huge. Yeah, I mean, wow. And uh, had another area. I mean, just the. I think the projection booth area uh, was pretty large, pretty large. And uh, I think they had um, those <coughs> digital projectors, you know, because most people would say, "Hey, we want the real thing. We want the film itself, not this digital." Because I wouldn't even trust digital. It's like the spy loved me. I saw it at the Empire Leicester Square digital presentation. And the director um, um, wasn't a kind of, um, he didn't have any high hopes for the damn thing, you know. It's like digital, what, 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 what's this, you know. Uh, and he was right, you know. And the movie just had problems. It had edge enhancement all over it. It looked like it was DNR'd slightly. It, uh, it also had faulty soundtrack 60 minutes into the movie where the sound was switching on and off through the cinema processor because something in the hard drive signaling 
com- caused us confusion where the signal started te- telling the process of the switch this and that on and off on and off and the s- left and center and right was switching on and off and going left to right left to right on and off and then the center went completely out and still like i say it's got a foggy sound sort of mix over the so the dialogue was still present but only in the left and right and I had to shift my body over slightly because I was dead center on the in the empire, and I could hear the one channel over to the right. I think was just a little bit outputting more, or it could have been the alignment on the HF horns, because if you align them and move when playing pink noise, and you've got the microphone, and you're looking for the the rise in the frequency, and then check the evaluations over and over and over. You've got to be very, very patient. Can't just rush it um, until everything is spot on. But I had to shift myself, and it, it just became very uncomfortable. It was, it was crap. <laughs> it was crap. So. Goodbye. Money, Penny. Where's 007? He's on a mission, sir, in Austria. Well, tell him to pull out immediately. Just raise the level up just a little bit on the soft side. Oh, James. I cannot find the word. Also, trying to think um, how this compares to the NTS James, USA pressing. I need you. So does England. Oh, yeah, I can see some edge enhancement down there. So does England. You know. I need you. So does England. Around the, uh, around there, I can see some... So does England. So does England. I wonder if it has Q dots on it. I mean, the, uh, the USA pressing doesn't have Q dots. He has just left. Maybe some of the, the, the earlier, uh, pan and scan versions might have been uh, from a print version I'd, or maybe interpositive, I don't know. He has t- but I don't want to buy a pan and scan. Uh, no way. Absolute not. Um, what's the point? <laughs> it's just doing this. Zooming in on the bloody image, if you know what I mean. And then you got to scan it and all this crap. So, you know, might as well just do my uh, own pan and scan here. Left. He has just left. He has just left. Over and out. Message received. We are waiting. Over and out. Yeah, I'll do my Message absurd, received. my absurd and pan out. scan. Message received. We are waiting. Over and out. So you're and looking out. at you're looking at Message sky. We are thinking, waiting. what the bloody hell? I never heard the sky talking we are before. Waiting. Over and out. <laughs> yeah. He has just left. Over and out. Message received. We are waiting. Over and up. Yeah. It's better than scope. <laughs> we are waiting. Over and up. Received. We are waiting. Over so and base up. extension. Man. Oh, wow. Oh, that's kicking in my chest. going right through my body that oh oh that's going right through my body that's oh <sighs> wow see the thx there is you know i make sure you know this is why i rehearse movies before you know if i show it to a friend or anything i rehearse it before because i'm an ex-projectionist and i would know what to look for what to listen for and what to feel for, that's three things. And there is a fourth, which I ain't going to tell you which, because that's hush, hush, top secret. Wow. Oh, oh, that's a... 
pressing into my body. Let's just back it, back it down a bit, I think. Let's just back it down a bit on that. Less is more, if you know what I mean. But it's not just a case of backing it down. Um, it's a case of putting the um, the mix up on an RTA analyzer, so you can look at the uh, the the channels, the frequency response uh, throughout the uh, duration of the running time, and then think, okay, take the put a. This is why you like you gotta have secondary EQ, which is what I use. So I've got primary EQ, secondary EQ. And so you use your secondary EQ to adjust specifically for the movie presentation. Um, it's and uh, if you've got several movies to show to, you know, whatever, and then you've got to dial in, you know, have a little intermission, you know, a little uh, break, you know, ten minutes while getting the next show set up and then dialing in the uh, specific uh, frequency EQ plate for playback. Let me just try that again. Even though I've just taken it down on the level, I should take it down on the frequency. But all right, which is probably hard between fifty and sixty, maybe seventy hertz. <laughs> That's still good, uh, but that's a little bit less, but yeah, that's good. Listen to it in the discreet on the uh, where it be the AC3 laser disc, which I don't have because the DVD region two or whatever the region one THX uh, DVD it's going to be the exact same, it's going to be the exact same transfer. Um, so eh, would I get an AC3? Um, no, I don't think I would. I think I'll just call it quit now on the uh, because I've got two pressings of the USA and the uh, Japan pressing. I must say I like the artwork on the uh, Japan pressing. But the music mix here with the uh, you hear that discreetly in the fight in the uh, across the uh, LCR when muting one of the channels. I forget which whether it's in the I think it's in the center channel mix. And then you take out, mute the uh, left and right, and then you just hear this doc, 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 different sort of sound, you know, in the center. <laughs> but it's nicely balanced, mixed on this for the for the four two four. Oh wow! The, oh, the sub bass extension kicking me there.
like punching, like bumping into that other guy. What I'd do there. Just take up the fader a little bit louder, just when it goes over the cliff. And then you hear that breeze of air and like, oh my goodness me, he's at it. <laughs> yeah, I still see the uh, same, um, I'm looking at the little blemishes on the print here. Um, so if I just back up that few set on the frame, that's the frame advance, yeah. Back it up there. If I just bring the camera and zoom in, you see the little blemish. And the way it's it on a on a thirty five print, it would be kind of circleish, because that's passing through an anamorphic lens. It kind of comes out like that because it's. Um, you know, it's print wear and so forth, and def you know, whatever. Uh, if that was printed optically onto the film itself during process, um, um, yeah, go figure. <laughs> but this is going for an anamorphic lens, you know, to the transfer. Yeah. Whoa, feel a bit of the bass rumble there. It's kind of a little bit noisy-ish on the, uh, I think, you know, kind of like, it's not laser rock. Nobody does it Bass is going to kick me in the chest in a second. Oh, wow. Can't adjust the uh, this it's going. It's adjusting the uh, the color level, so I've got to tap the screen. Zoomed in, or side down, down the side there. It's a little bit rocked. slightly um because i'd probably add another laser disc pressing on yeah it's just just the uh bring that shift that over a bit shift shift that over uh, i'll do that the other way uh, yeah let's, let's look at that again let's turn that off Yeah, 
I can see down the side there now on the print. I thought, because, you know, like I say, I know what to look for, you know. If I thought this side looked a little bit, you know, out of place. But you got to use the uh, the stretch and all that, otherwise the image is all going to be down in the middle. It doesn't look right on the bloody OLED or on the projector. You've got to adjust it until, um, you know. Um, but it's not overstretching it and so forth, you know. So that looks correct. Um, yeah. Most, most laser discs are always sort of formatted slightly different on the, the encoding, on the uh, transfer, on the, the aspect ratio. So I think the last one I played was Man with a Golden Gun. Um, but I had that set at 4.3, so the, um, the framing would have the same black bars top and bottom as a scope movie here so this framing height here would be roughly the same framing height to the man with a golden gun which was only widescreen and so then you know with scope opens out wider Should be purple, but it's coming out red. This camera, I'm gonna have to uh, go into the settings a little bit deeper to see um, if it's got auto adjustment because it seems manual, it seems like it's manual and it's not really doing it very well. <laughs> <laughs> 